today's video you'll learn how you can make your own induction heater and it's going to look just like this this is the whole unit consists of two MOSFETs and channel MOSFETs in this case I use an IRF Z44N the schematic calls for an STP 30 NF10 or higher rated current and voltage MOSFET but all I had on hand was an IRF Z44N and it worked just fine this inductor right here on the left is a choke and you're going to either have to make your own find one from scrap or buy one in my case I had this plastic core laying around from some electronics that I salvaged and written on there it says 25 slash 20 by 10 and 10 is the millimeters from top to bottom I guess 25 is the outside diameter the inner diameter is 20 millimeters but the color is what's important for the material of the toroid now it's, this color here is more of a rusty brownish color I don't know exactly what the core value is but if you're looking for the exact same one it's a 25 20 10 and it's got this rusty color to it you will use two half watt 200 ohm resistors you're going to use a 1N5819 or higher those are the shot key diodes uh, the heat sinks I made I had a large heat sink about that wide and I cut these two out of it and I drilled the holes so I could mount them on it make sure you use thermal compound in my case these get warm but they don't get hot now the working coil which is this part right here I made it out of a one inch diameter pipe and I wound nine turns with a center tap of four and a half and that's where you can see the center tap is these two twisted together so you twist them in the middle and you'll have each end that's what it looks like this way now the capacitor you want to use a high voltage preferably a high frequency capacitor because the one part of the circuit that likes to get hot is the capacitor so if you can find a high frequency one you'll be a lot better off and if you could find two capacitors that you could put in parallel like in my case I have a 0.47 microfarad so if you could find two 0.22's and you could parallel them up it should be able to distribute the current better now because I'm also driving the circuit at around 19 volts the gates of each MOSFET this red wire that feeds in right here to the two 220 ohm resistors I'm regulating it to 12 volts so the maximum I'm gonna have entering these two resistors into the gates is 12 volts and all you do is just put it 7812 on the inside put maybe a 220 microfarad electrolytic and on the outgoing side the regulated side you could put a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor or you could just use both the same make sure when you wind the coil it's nice and even you don't want any parts of the coil shorting so make sure there's a space between the coil this is 12 gauge copper wire I took this out of Romex wire and it doesn't require that much to wind it up now for the power supply I took one of my microwave oven transformers I have a whole bunch of these and I tore out the secondary, the 2000 volt, and I just wound a whole bunch of 14 gauge wire in place of it. Now, if there's no load connected to this winding, I'll put out roughly 30 volts DC after my rectifier and capacitor. I use a large capacitor, a 3300 microfarad, to smooth out any ripples, and that will feed directly into the induction heating unit with the unit connected I'm drawing approximately 18 and a half volts so this works out perfect so if you have a microwave oven transformer laying around you would want to use one just strip the, the winding out get some 14 gauge wire wind maybe 20 25 turns check the voltage rectify it and you got a good power supply now the purpose of this choke is to help with the surge entering the circuit to limit the current a little bit and also it keeps the high frequency from the working coil from the rest of the circuit from going into your power supply now I really don't need this coil here 
because I'm running off of this transformer like this, I did bypass this with a jumper wire from there to there, and it runs just as good. But the schematic call for this if you're using a PSU, power supply unit, and if you have a meter like this, this is a great meter, it's WaveTech 27XT. So what I would do is I'd put this to my two millihenry range, and I would wind some wire through the core, maybe three turns. I would keep checking what the value is. Now, either you have to buy a two millihenry inductor like this, or you could find it in scrap. You, if you have a meter like this, you can verify what the value is to check it out. Or you could just wind a bunch of wire onto a toroid to find out what the value is going to be by verifying it with your meter. Now let's go over the schematic. Now L1 is the working coil, which is that coil right there. And that particular coil is roughly one inch in diameter. And you want to make it larger than the object you want to heat, but you don't want to make it too large. By having a smaller coil, the electromagnetic field is more concentrated. And the object that you want to heat will heat much faster. I originally had a one and a half inch coil. When I put the screwdriver in, it took a long time and it never got hot. So when I reduced this to one inch, after about 30 seconds, the screwdriver got nice and hot because I'm concentrating that electromagnetic field and the currents, the eddy currents, are able to heat up the conductive object much faster. Now the frequency that this particular induction heater is operating at, this coil is roughly 1.1 microhenry when I check it, and the capacitor is 0.47 UF or 0.47 microfarad. Now in the description box I will be placing a link to a resonant frequency calculator and it's used for tank circuits, for transmitters and applications like this. If you input the inductance value for this working coil, which is 1.1, into the formula with the capacitor, which is 0.47 microfarad, the result will be around 221 kilohertz. And that is exactly within 3 or 4 kilohertz of what the circuit is. If you'd like a lower frequency, use a larger capacitor. If you want to use a higher frequency, then you would use a smaller value capacitor. You can also go to a bigger coil, and that would lower the frequency. Or you can go to a smaller one, and that would raise the frequency. All right, so here's the schematic. You're going to be using 12-gauge copper wire for everything. One-inch diameter on that coil there. It's nine turns center tapped, so you're going to wind nine turns. You're going to come out with this one in the middle here. That's a center tap at four and a half. So you have the full nine with a four and a half. In my case, it's 225 kilohertz with a 0.47 cap and a 1.1 microhenry coil. Two millihenries is that coil right there. In my case, it's 2.4. If I take off one turn, it lowers it to 1.9, so I left it at 2.4. Going a little higher is not going to hurt. Now the MOSFET is an STP30NF10, which is a 100 volt 35 amp. You could use uh, higher rated ones than this, and all I had laying around was an IRF Z44N that works perfectly. It only gets warm, or very warm, doesn't get hot. Both your resistors are, I use not 240, I use 200 ohm half watt. You can go 200 ohm one watt if you want to keep them running cooler. Both diodes are the shot key diodes, which is 1N5819s, all the way up to 5822, they all work. And because my supply here puts out roughly 18 volts, I wanted to keep the voltage lower on the gates of the MOSFET, so I use a 7812 voltage regulator with an electrolytic capacitor on the inside of the regulator and the out. You can use a 220 microfarad, 35 volt. One on the in, one on the out. All right, so there's the schematic. It's pretty simple. 15 volts, or a little higher is fine. Flows into L2. Then it flows into the center tap of the coil that we wound. Each leg coming off of the coil that you wound has the capacitor across it. And then you have a MOSFET there going into one leg. 
another MOSFET here tying into that leg. Then you have from the gate of one MOSFET the shock key diode into the drain of this MOSFET. And then you have the gate of this MOSFET with the shock key diode going into the drain of this MOSFET. And both gates are supplied with a 200 ohm half watt resistor feeding into the 12 volt voltage regulator, the 7812 with the capacitors. And that is it. Okay, I'm now going to demonstrate. I will heat the screwdriver up inside the induction coil. Here we go. You'll see it glowing red hot in about 30 seconds. beginning to glow right now glowing really good heats fairly quickly coil Coils gets hot. Not that you can't touch it. Probably about 140, 145 or something like that. MOSFETs are just warm, which is good. No problem there. The only thing that gets hot is the capacitor. I might take this out and double up on two of the 0.22 microfarads to spread out the current. The last thing I will show you now is what the frequency is. I will probe this wire here, and you'll see the reading come up over there. Let's try it. Okay. I'm going to touch that there. And 228 kilohertz. There you go.